regarding periprosthetic hip fractures. Periprosthetic fractures can be a periprosthetic fracture, a fracture about the prosthesis, for example, around the arthroplasty stem, or it can be a peri-implant fracture, which is a fracture adjacent to the surgical implant, that is, in plate or a medullary nail. Press the fra periprosthetic fractures of the femur can be around the uh, femoral component or the acetabular component, or it can be proximal femoral peri-implant component. It is a bimodal dis uh, distribution. The elderly happens with low energy fall from standing height, and youngs can it can happen with a motor vehicle accident. Regarding the risk factors, there are two to certain types of risk to be considered: patient factors and surgical factors. Patient factors is increasing age, female sex, osteoporosis, inflammatory arthropathy, and altered bone morphology. Surgical factor is a press fit fixation, which has increased incidence of about 5%. Anterior approach, which can have increased incidence to up to 10%. Long stem implantation and surgical fixation with impaction bone grafting. Third is mortality is about 3% in these fractures. Regarding the classification, there is a Vancouver system which divides into operative and intraoperative classification. Regarding the Vancouver classification, it is either A, that is trochanteric, G means greater, L, L means lesser, B involving the stem, B1 means well fixed prosthesis, 2 is loose prosthesis, and 3 is loose prosthesis, poor bone stock, and C is below the stem. Similar classification is by Professor Haddad, which classified till A to F. Intraoperative fractures happen more commonly with uncemented implants. Two to side, seven times increase risk of fracture compared to the cemented implants. Risk factor depends on stem morphology, bone morphology, approach, female sex, increasing age, and history of prior hip surgery or revision surgery. Regarding the Vancouver classification of intraoperative femur fractures, it can be classified similarly into ABC. A means metaphysial, B means diaphysial, C means distal to the stem. A, A, the one is for cortical perforation, a2 is a undisplaced crack and A3 is displaced for or unstable crack. Similarly, B is diaphysial, B1 is cortical perforation, B2 is displaced crack, B3 is displaced or unstable crack. C is distal to the stem, C1 is cortical perforation, C2 is undisplaced crack and C3 is unstable crack if operative during the operative intervention a crack happens or a cortical perforation type a1 happens protected weight bearing is advised if there is a a2 undisplaced crack still protected weight bearing is advised if the fracture is recognized early you can do a cerclage wire for a displaced a3 or unstable a orif with claw plate with conversion to long stem if implant is unstable. Regarding the B1 intraoperative fractures, which is cortical perforation, a cortical strut with or without conversion to long stem implant is advised. If there is a B2 undisplaced crack, a lateral plate with conversion to long stem if implant unstable is advised. Similarly, with B3, displaced or undis unstable crack, lateral plate with conversion to long stem if implant is unstable is advised. Regarding a C1 fracture intraoperative distal to the stem, cortical struct is advised. C2, which is undisplaced crack, a lateral plate is advised. 
C3, which is a displaced, unstable, distal to the stem, a lateral plate is advised. Whenever I see these patients, <clears throat> I will evaluate this patient with respect to the history. With past history is critical to assess the patient functionality. Premorbid pre hip conditions like pain, instability, and weakness should be noted. Mid thigh pain, startup pain, progressive limb shortening, and stem loosening should be assessed. Red flag signs for infection, that is pain, fever, and raining signage should be noted. Physical activities like may be limited by pain, note location of prior incisions, leg length discrepancy, skin and soft tissue condition, and neuromotor function. <clears throat> Regarding radiographic work, a standard AP leg of the affected hip should be done. A low AP pelvis should be done to check the implant position and polythylene wear and osteolysis pride. Previous X-ray should be also reviewed. A CT or MRI is rarely, indica rarely indicated. Pre for preoperative planning, I would like to review the index operation report in which the implant was used and any intraoperative abnormalities were noted. Post-op radiograph should be reviewed for subsidence or malpositioning. Regarding templating, it is important to consider templating in periprosthetic fractures to consider multiple systems options and a bailout options. Ensure our all necessary equipments are available. Regarding the timing of surgery, it should not be go beyond 72 hours. The goal of any operative intervention is bead bearing as tolerated. It may not be possible to do a fix, and it may depend on the type of fixation, quality of the bone, and implants used. Alternative strategy, study, strategy could be dual plating or a nail with a plate. More overall fixation, we need to not to create another new problems. We, are, we should overlap the implant, should avoid stress risers, and plate the whole bone. The important concept for B1 type of fracture is not to forget the basic osteosynthesis principles. Choose absolute or relative stability and create it. Don't disturb biology of the implant and Test stem intraoperatively and be prepared to revise. Regarding the Vancouver uh, post operative classification, <clears throat> AG and AL type A depends on the fracture fragment and needs to be to have intervene intervention. A B1 if it's stable, can we manage conservatively, but the best option would be to plate it, fixed with the circlage wire and plate construct. A B2, where the, there is adequate bone stock, it can be either revised or replaced. Current recommendation is to do the least, which that is to, do, to do a plating instead of revision of the implant. A B3 would need a long stem with further intervention, like proximal femoral replacement or endoprosthesis. A allograft struts can be used if there is bone loss. It should be noted that it's inferior to internal fixation with plate and screws for simple patterns, and there is increased risk and time to union in meta-analysis. Regarding acetable Periprosthetic fractures, they are classified by Peterson and Levelon. Type 1 is component is implant is unchanged, component position is unchanged, there is no pain with the hip motion. And type 2 are radiographic loosening or significant hip pain. If there is a stable cup, you put in augment with screws and post op advise limited weight bearing. In unstable cup, you revise the cup and ORIF of acetabular fractures.